Well, hey there. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the Radioddity DB20G GMRS radio. Radioddity sent this out to us, uh, it's been a week or two, a couple weeks ago. It, it's been a while. Um, we've been backed up, I've been trying to get this backlog of work done for forever. Uh, I went through, kind of compiled some things about this radio that I like and some things that I don't like, but the key takeaway here for this, and, and I'll, if there's anything you're gonna take away from this, is that this is probably the best value in low-priced GMRS mobile radios. Now, in the past, I've made some videos about uh, another certain American brand that uses Chinese radios, uh, Midland, but I guess I was a little bit more, I should say, I hadn't, hadn't explored this world of GMRS as much, and I've come to realize that those radios, while can, they can be had for the same price as the DB20G, lack a lot of the features that this DB20G packs, and it's why I think that this is gonna be your best bet for your first GMRS mobile radio, unless you're someone who just, well, anyway. The coolest thing about this guy is that it is computer programmable, unlike the other entry level repeater capable radios that you're gonna find out there that are like, uh, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna call a spade a spade, it's Midland, okay? If you're looking for a cheap, I shouldn't say cheap, but the, the lowest price repeater capable GMRS radio you can buy, um, in the past, it's just been Midland. It's MXT-115s or it's MXT-275s. Now, those radios are perfectly fine if you're off-roading with your buddies and you're all together in one group and you wanna talk back and forth, but if you want to explore the world of GMRS and really get into using repeaters and communicating with other people in the GMRS community, you're gonna need a radio that's got a little bit more capability. And what I'm gonna tell you right now is that the DB20G has that capability and it offers it at the same price as those other radios. It retails under $120 typically, and that's well under the mark that you're gonna see something like an MXT-115 or an MXT-275, which are in like the $150 price range. One thing though, the DB20G doesn't come with an antenna. You're gonna have to buy that separate, but you can shop on Amazon. I'll give you a link to a decent one that you can connect, and in that same price range, you're gonna have a much more capable radio than those other ones. And let's start talking about this thing and, and what it really does. Right out of the gate, you're gonna notice the box is kind of small, it's not very big. They didn't waste a whole bunch of time with flashy packaging, which I like, I can just get right in here and get to it. Radio itself is just a small head unit. Comes complete with a cigarette lighter plug, which the kits that you're gonna get from other people like Midland will have this same kind of a plug set up, but this is great for a first time user because you're not gonna have to get in here and start clipping wires and fusing connections so that you can get power. You can just plug it straight into your cigarette lighter port. And if you get a little bit more advanced, however, you can clip the wires and go ahead and hardwire it in, which I'm gonna probably end up doing with all of ours. And you'll notice that right there on the face, you got a nice big square LCD. Oh God, I love that. It's an actual on off volume dial. And the rest of the things in the small little box that you'll find are gonna be, uh, your microphone and cable, mounting hardware, and a mounting bracket. All the basics, all you need, nothing you don't. And there's there's a manual in there. It's not much of a manual, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I just went ahead and programmed this with a computer. Um, you can program it on the face, and it's, well, it is programmed with a computer. You gotta download some software from Radiotony and some drivers for that USB cable that comes with it that you didn't see actually, that, that's something else that's in the box. There's actually a USB to uh, serial connection that will plug into this thing and get it programmed. You're gonna need a Windows PC. There's no Mac functionality with this for programming at all. But like I said, you can download the software and the drivers from Radioddity and they work because they work on a Windows 7 netbook that I picked up that I've been using to program all these radios with just fine. One of the features that I like right off the bat, one of the most glaring obvious features that, that really caught me about this radio was not just the fact that it does repeaters, it does split tones, but it also gives you eight additional repeater channels 
for which you can program different CTCSS or DCS codes, which means that if you're traveling around, obviously there's only, what, nine or 10 channels on GMRS that are actually repeater capable. So as you travel around the country, you're gonna start encountering a lot of different repeaters on the same frequencies with different CTCSS or DCS codes. What this allows you to do is it gives you a bank of up to eight additional channels on the same frequencies as the normal ones, but you can program in different CTS, DCS codes, as well as the names of the repeaters. So as you're driving around, you can just switch them over. Like I've only used, you know, a couple of them. I'll get to around to it as, as we travel more around the country. I'm sure that I will be using more and more of those and adding to them. It's also got the ability to monitor VHF, UHF, with a bank of, I believe, up to 500 programmable channels that you can listen to, which is it's really cool. Um, back when I was in the transportation industry, we used to do a lot of over-dimensional moves that involved police escort. And our local Department of Public Service slash Highway Patrol doesn't issue their officer CBs. So we would get in these situations where we would have these gigantic super loads that were escorted by police with no ability to communicate with the police officers and drivers and our escort vehicles, but I had a radio file pilot car who actually went through and programmed a lot of the channels so that we could talk in simplex to them, whatever. Don't give them on the legality, but I would rather be a little bit more illegal than not being able to communicate with somebody that I'm trying to work with. That being said, it was a real boon to me to be able to have that ability to monitor certain VHF, UHF traffic as it relates to highway patrol because you get a situational awareness when you're going down the road. You know where the accidents are. You know where the speed traps are. You might have a situation that's coming up behind you. There was an incident once in uh, a move that I was a part of where there was a high speed chase going on behind us. And because we were able to monitor that traffic, we knew it was coming. We could get our whole flying circus off the road so that we weren't a hazard for ourselves and law enforcement as they were trying to get this person off the road. You also have the ability to monitor those NOAA weather frequencies, which again, if you're in the outdoors over landing space like I am, that's a good thing because if you're out somewhere where you don't have any kind of cell phone reception or any kind of data reception to get the weather report, you can usually pull it off that NOAA weather and, and know what's going to happen like if there's a big storm moving in or something. This thing does have a really nice little LCD full color display that really displays what's going on that I like. It also gives you the ability to display in frequencies, which is good if you're gonna be dealing in the GMRS space because radios from Midland only give you a channel number and they also, when you go to try to program in the CTCSS or DCS codes, you gotta pull out a manual and do a little bit of decoding because what would be say 141.3, which is the national travel tone, is actually CTCSS 12 because they're all numbered to a two digit number. <clears throat> you gotta go find the table, run it down, find the corresponding two digit number. Same thing with the channels themselves. When you're on something like my GMRS, they're gonna go ahead and give you the actual repeater uh, frequencies just as the frequency number. They're not gonna tell you it's GMRS 22, 23, 24, 25, which if you were using a Midland radio, you would then have to pull out the manual and go through it all again. I think if you're going to get into the space of having a GMRS radio for like GMRS communication purposes, talking to our repeaters and everything else, you really gotta have that. And this radio will provide you with that at the same price as a Midland. Some things I don't like about the radio or I'm not particularly crazy about so far. One right off the bat is this manual. Um, well, if you've, ever, if you've ever watched Randy's videos, you'll know that he probably bagged on this hard enough that I don't have to mention it. I did find one thing though that he never mentioned in the quick guide under prepare work as it's telling you how to get everything ready for what you're gonna be doing. There's this section called Majestic, majestic sucker? Try Google searching that. I couldn't find anything. Not sure what that is, but, um, you know, I'm not gonna bag on these guys because maybe they're just not any native English speakers or anybody who's a copywriter in their company, which, you know, you're getting the lowest price thing imported. I will say, you guys, I've dabbled in copywriting and technical writing, and I took a lot of technical writing classes in college. So if you guys ever want any help with this, just let me know. I mean, I'll gladly go over this and proofread it for you for 
some more free radios to review. Just a thought. For computer programming, it's not yet supported by Chirp, but then again, they do provide you with software that I've found works just fine to get it programmed and I can do everything I need to through that software, so there's no need to go find Chirp for it yet. While that screen is a nice, beautifully lit up LCD screen that displays all the information that you need, it's also kind of small and it means that to be able to really see that that display going down the road or bouncing down the road, you need to put that radio mounted somewhere where you can actually see it. So you've gotta be cognizant of that when you're trying to mount it and I think that limits a little bit of it because you also have to use the faceplate to do a lot of the programming functions. They're not all on the microphone, which means again, you need to have access to the front of that radio at all times and it needs to be somewhere where you can see it well. And, and that comes back to the, the functions on it for programming and everything else, there's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve to it. It's not entirely intuitive. That being said, you can pretty much do all of the programming functions you need to do on the face of that radio. You don't need to program them. Connection-wise, I've taken it out, tested it. It sounds clear. I can pick up and people can hear me. I've been able to hit all of the normal, usual suspect repeaters that I need to hit. So far, it's looking good and it's looking promising. And like I said, I think this is the radio that you're gonna want as an entry-level GMRS radio just because you'll run into what I ran into when I got kind of lulled into buying, or not didn't buy them, they were, they were, let's be honest, they were given to me because we have a YouTube channel, we're very fortunate to have that. I kind of got lulled into that not realizing it, and the more I realize about GMRS and how it works, you really want to have all those functions. Otherwise, uh, it's really, 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 really frustrating when you're going around trying to switch between repeaters and having to pull up all those different CTCSS codes and decode them all the time and the ability to just say, you know what, I'm gonna go on a trip, I know that I'm gonna need to load these repeaters in, you can just grab your laptop, hook it up to the machine, boom, you've got them all in there, you don't have to worry about that, and you don't have to worry about as you travel 100 miles having to pull out the radio and plug everything in after you get your super secret decoder ring. 